Craftsman program. And uh, I came to Gordon-Conwell from Bible College because I wanted to really deepen my knowledge of scripture. And um, multiple professors of mine went, went to Gordon-Conwell. I actually went to a Pentecostal Bible College and came to Gordon-Conwell. And one of the reasons I came to Gordon-Conwell was because it was not um, affiliated with any particular denomination. Um, and had a reputation for being, for having um, Pentecostals in class right next to Presbyterians, right next to Baptists, right next to Methodists. And we were all together studying God's word, studying theology together, learning how to, how to be better disciples and how to minister um, in today's world. In fact, while I was here, I'd say that that was probably one of the, the biggest highlights that I had as a, as a student. Um, was really getting to know fellow students from different backgrounds and and getting to just get, get an idea of uh, the kingdom of God is bigger than the assemblies of God, which is where I came from. Um, and but then also learning that that, you know, uh, reformed people are not just the frozen chosen They're, They can be passionate about Jesus, just like Pentecostals can be. Um, and so it was it was a really great opportunity to be here and also to, to just catch the passion of the professors for God's word and for God's people. So um, just a shout out as a former as a former student, <clears throat> and I'm actually am a current student as well. Um, I'm working on a doctoral program here in um, world Christianity, global Christianity and development. And so uh, I'm I'm studying while I'm doing my my uh, full-time job here as a librarian. So uh, I, did, I didn't come to Gordon-Conwell with the intent of becoming a librarian, but I ended up becoming one and it was a, it was a good fit for me. And so it's, it's a pleasure to be able to, to uh, be talking to you today. Um, so I want to talk to you about the libraries. Let me share my screen here and let's find the right screen to share. Okay, can you see that okay? Everything all right? Good. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, more than just books, uh, and that's just the, the little introduction to what I was what, what I just said here. Um, let me advance the slide. There we go. So, what is a theological library? Gordon Conwell, uh, the Goddard Library at Gordon Conwell, is a theological library. So, it's a specialized kind of library. Um, you most likely will not find too many books on DIY or um, you know, renovating your home or uh, things along those lines. We are a specialized library. Um, so we focus on um, the curricular needs of our students um, and then also the resources necessary to do research within, within theological, um, theological topics in general, but then also within uh, psychology and counseling topics as well. Um, so when it comes to libraries, you know, the question is, is, you know, some people think when they think about a library, they think, okay, it's just a building where you put books or it's a collection of books. Um, it's a place where you've got librarians kind of annoyingly coming down and saying, shh, you know, be quiet and things like that. Um, it's, it's, you know, I will say that the library is the natural habit, habitat for librarians and so that you will find librarians in libraries. Um, but really beyond just um, a, a theological library being a collection of books or a theological library being a building where books are. Um, I really, it, the longer I've worked here as a librarian in the context of seminary education, um, the more I realize that when I walk through the stacks of our library, when I walk through the bookshelf, you know, through the books, um, I realize that when I'm here with these books and these resources, that I, it's, it's a physical representation of the cloud of witnesses talked about in Hebrews. Uh, you know, right after uh, Hebrews 11, where they have the, the recitation of the, the heroes of the faith, um, the author of Hebrews says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Um, and because of that, we can throw off the weight that hinders us. We can run with perseverance, the race marked before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Um, and you know, Jesus ultimately being our source, ultimately being our, our example. Um, and we look towards him and those great cloud of witnesses so that we do not grow weary and lose heart. And so really that the library stands as a physical representation of that cloud of witnesses, not just from history, but also worldwide. So a, a theological library at its best is going to represent not just the views of the West, not just a North American view or a European view, um, but is also going to be working to represent the theologies and the and the the uh, the, the teachings coming from the church globally. 
Um, and so that's my job as a library director and developing the collection is really to look beyond just historical resources, but to look at what resources are being developed across the world um, to help you in your in your studies. So it's it's a tangible representation of the people of God throughout the ages and around the world. Um, I, that's how I approach my job as a librarian here, and, uh, and how m many of our library, how our library staff in general, um, approach the position. Now, just a couple of nuts and bolts here. here. Uh, we have at each of the at each of the seminary campuses, we do have um, libraries at each campus. Uh, so at our Hamilton campus, we actually have two libraries. We have the regular Goddard Library, but we have a specialized library at the Center for the Study of Global Christianity that concentrates on um, demographic studies and description of, of the church worldwide. Um, and if you're ever uh, if, if you're ever listening to the news or reading an article where it says there are X number of Christians in such and such a country or X number of martyrs out in this particular part of the world, most likely that information came from the Center for the Study of Global Christianity. And we have their library here at the Hamilton campus. Um, then we also have a library in our Boston campus, uh, the Jackson Library, and they, they specialize in not just resources for general MDiv studies, um, but also in urban ministry. Uh, we have our Charlotte Library, uh, the Linzel Library, our Charlotte campus um, has a couple different special collections in early Christian studies and, and in New Testament, um, as well as other resources there. We have our Jackson Library, Jacksonville Library. Uh, which is a, a smaller library, more informal, and has more of a kind of a uh, laid back study environment there. Um, but then also we do have a dig digital library space as well. So, in, and I'll get to that in, in a little bit. The other thing that's important to know as a student at Gordon-Conwell is, um, and this is something that regardless of what campus you go to, you have access to the library that's associated, you know, your seminary library. Um, but also, we have agreements with different libraries and different seminaries uh, across the U.S. So, for instance, if you're in, in the Boston area or if you're in the Hamilton campus, um, you have access to the Boston Theological Interreligious Consortium. So that includes libraries like Harvard's, um, Har Harvard's Divinity School Library, Boston University School, School um, of Theology Library, if you're at the Carolinas, um, if you're down at the Charlotte campus, the Carolinas Theological Library Consortium opens up uh, resources at Duke and places along those lines. So have, if you study at Gordon-Conwell, it also gives you access beyond that. Um, but then also, uh, there's also libraries in the Florida area as well. Um, but we have, we actually, if you're a student, whether you're on campus or whether you're remotely somewhere in the United States, um, any place on this map where you can see you've got the little book open is a place where you have access to a theological library um, through our agreements with other theological schools throughout the U.S. So um, if you do become a student here and you're needing help getting, the, getting a hold of resources or for actually finding physical, um, a physical library, uh, contact us and we can we can set you up with uh, with a library in your area that has access to theological resources. One of the most important resources we have at the library is our human resources. Um, what's one thing that, that I just can't stress enough is the librarians we're here to and all of our librarians are committed to seeing you succeed as a student. Uh, we want to see you thrive, we want to see you learn, we want to see you grow as a student at Gordon-Conwell, and then we also have a desire to see you grow and influence um, our world for God's kingdom after you leave Gordon-Conwell and while you're here as well. Um, the skills you learn here, the skills you learn at Gordon-Conwell, and the resources you access here are going to be resources that'll, that'll hopefully, you'll be able to integrate into your, into your uh, ministry in the future, but then also it's not just about getting the, the, the content right now, but learning how to figure out how to find the content later on that's going to be important for your ministry. Um, so as a librarian, really one of my main jobs is to is to help you learn how to find good resources. Um, and so we have librarians here that are not just trained in the library in library science, but we have librarians here that specialize in church history. We have librarians like myself who did 
uh, master's degree level study in biblical studies, um, spiritual formation. We, we have pastors who serve as on our library staff as well. And it's, it's, you know, we all look at our job as librarians as an extension of ministry and seeing you succeed. Um, and we realize that what you learn at Gordon-Conwell is going to have an impact for the kingdom of God. Um, so really, as far as more than just books, um, the, the library staff really does exist to help you. It's, it's one of those, uh, one of my favorite things to tell students each semester when we have orientation is that it's my job for you to take advantage of me. You, you, you know, we, we don't like that term, don't take advantage of me. Well, no, really, that's what a librarian is there for, for you to, to really come and say, hey, you're, you know, this is your job is to help me out. Well, we're here to help you out. Um, so please come, come find me if you have any questions. The, the other thing is, is um, seminary studies can be, it can be confusing. Um, one of the things that people don't quite realize when they get into seminary studies is um, if you're studying theology, if you're studying pastoral ministry, you're going to end up having your fingers in all sorts of disciplines. So there's history, there's biblical studies, there's biblical languages, there's ancient literature, there's these different research, research tools and things like that. And it's nobody, and, and that's one of the beauties of studying theology is you're exposed to such a wide range of material. It's not just a monolith, you know, it's not just this one slice of things. You're gonna be looking at a, a broad range of material. Problem is, is, you know, you come to seminary and you're in a New Testament class and the professor tells you, hey, you need to look in the Mishnah. Well, if you've never heard what the Mishnah is, what are you going to do? Um, you know, you can ask your professor, what's the Mishnah? And hopefully the professor will be, will, will tell you, but you can also come to the library and ask a librarian for help um, with that type of, re those types of resources. Um, so really, you know, the library, our, our, our job is to, is to help you through that, wade through that kind of confusion. Um, when you're when you're accessing materials. Now back down to some of the the nitty gritty of resources that we have. Um, in, as far as print resources spread across all of our libraries, all five libraries that we have, uh, we have over three hundred thousand print books um, on our shelves, and we also have access to over um, fifty thousand bound periodicals. But then also one of the things that we really try to, to um, do is provide access to textbook resources for students as well. Um, it's our goal each semester to do everything we can to, to um, minimize the amount of money that students have to spend on textbook resources. So we do try to get resources on our reserve shelves, even if they are textbooks. Some schools, um, uh, some, sometimes people, when they go to college, the, the college actually has a policy that says no. If it's a textbook, it's not going to be in the library. We, our, our view is no. If it's a textbook, we want it in the library, and we want to make sure that people have access to it. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we, we do our best to get course reserves available for, for, for you. Um, but beyond what we have here, um, you know, we have our library, we have a substantial theological library between all, the, all, the, all five campuses, or all four campuses and five libraries. Um, you also have access to the different consortial libraries, like I mentioned earlier, so BTI or the Carolinas Theological Libraries. Um, but then also, if we don't have it, you can request it. So you can get interlibrary loan resources. Um, you can get uh, you can get both electronic interlibrary loan and, and physical interlibrary loan. Or if we don't have it, you're always welcome to ask us, and we'll do what we can to get it for you. Um, now. If you want a preview of resources that we have available, um, it's here at library.gordonconwell.edu. Um, so you can see the URL right there, and I am going to switch my screen just to show you. Um, so here's the library website. It's got this kind of garish pink thing here saying that COVID is a problem. Um, but this is kind of the, the main place you go to find resources at the library. And as far as finding resources, you can search both electronic and print resources directly from the catalog here. Um, so, and you can see there are other resources that you can get a hold of. Um, you, can, you can see, you can get to databases, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but just to give you an idea, let's see, pastoral ministry. Hey, Jim, we're on the uh, electronic resources. Uh, oh, slide. Really? Okay. It's not on there, huh? 
Let's see. Do you see it now? Now we're still on the electronic oh, resources. Let me see here. Well, let me stop my share. And let me share again. There we go. How's that? There we go. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let me make sure that let's see that I can get back to my slide here. Are you able to see uh, electronic resources again now? Ah, yes. There we go. So let me go back to the main page. So here we are. So you can see from here, the library website has access to information about the different campus libraries. Uh, we also have, a, a, it's not technically part of the library, but you can get to it from the library website, this writing center, um, where it, from based in our Charlotte campus, they provide at help with, um, with not just uh, citation needs and research needs, but actually the process of writing and becoming a better writer as, as a seminarian, but then also in, in your future ministry. Um, but the library catalog is available right here from this WorldCat Discovery Catalog. Um, so if I type in pastoral ministry and hit enter, um, because we are a library that's a theological library, you'll see, okay, uh, there are 10,278 hits within the library system uh, for pastoral ministry in general. Um, I won't get into any details about how to do the searches because that's something that you'll get into once you're a student here. Um, but if you look, look down the line, you can actually isolate things and say, I don't want to just look at the print books, but I want to be able to look at the electronic books that are available for pastoral ministry. And you can see they have, they come up in the same lat, the same catalog and you have the option to view ebook and it'll tell you how to get to that particular resource. Um, now, regarding electronic resources, uh, we have access to something called the Digital Theological Library. And the Digital Theological Library is actually a group of theological libraries that have pulled together their resources to purchase electronic um, databases, ebooks, and electronic journals. And what the, what the DTL, and we refer to it as DTL for short, what the DTL is quickly becoming is really the premier electronic theological library out there um, as far as academic research um, in theology and related, related uh, resources. Um, it's really even, even it's, it's competitive even with large universities like, like Duke or Harvard, Uni Harvard University or places like that, that at one point in time, uh, seminaries had a hard time competing against universities. But because we've actually pulled together our resources um, and we have access to DTL, we really are able to just pretty much get anything that we can uh, when it comes to digital resources and make them available to you as, as a student. Um, you can see that right now, and this is just as of um, a couple of months ago, there are 620,000 ebooks. Um, and these aren't just electronic books like out of, you know, on archive.org or Google Books that are 200 years old and, and for free. These are books that are actually current books that have been written in the last, you know, the, the majority of these things have been written in the last um, last hundred years. So it's it's not it's not really old, old books, although there are old books as well. Um, you can see 35,000 journals um, and actually 50 million, more than 50 million individual articles that are available through DTL as well. And one of the really exciting things that that DTL is doing now is in the past, um, when it came to electronic resources, it was great if you were looking at resources that were new. So if you were in the, in the science fields, if you're in science, technology, engineering, medicine, any of those things, um, new materials that were relevant to your studies were available electronically. That was great. But then if there's material that was published earlier, um, it was only only the stuff that was really, really old was available electronically because there was no copyright to it. So they were willing to put that into electronic format. But then you had stuff that was published between 1930 and the 1990s 
that just never made it into electronic resources, into electronic format. And what the DTL has been doing recently is they've actually been going through and digitizing those materials and making them available. So really it's expanded things out and they're also doing their best to, um, to work on getting uh, other non-English language materials digitized as well. Um, and making them available in a way that's that's uh, useful to our students, but then also within copyright law and things along those lines. So we're not breaking the law on that. Um, but it's actually a really great material, and it's something that when I was a student, I really wish I had had when I was a student. So it's just one of those things as a library nerd that gets me excited. The other thing is not only do we do our best to get uh, library uh, resources available that are reserves in physical form, um, especially with COVID and things along those lines, we've, we've worked very hard to start doing our own digitization and of resources for reserves. Um, so if we, if we will purchase an electronic book, if we can get the electronic book, but unfortunately not everything is available electronically for purchase. So we end up trying to make the electronic version for people to use. Um, so it is something that we, we strive to, to serve all of our students, not just on campus um, that can access the library there, but also if you're in a remote situation, we want to be able to serve you as well. Um, and that's a, that's a very important priority for us. In addition to um, actual articles and books and things like that, uh, there are other databases that you have access to. And I mentioned that we have DTL, but one of the good things about, um, in a way, it's something you, know, you could say, well, why don't I just you know, get a hold of DTL and then I have access to all this stuff. Well, the good thing is, is because we, we have a, our own budget, we can purchase things beyond DTL. Um, so if you're actually a student here at Gordon-Conwell, you have access to all the stuff in DTL, plus you have our print resources, but then we also have other resources above and beyond DTL that you can use. Um, so a couple of those, for instance, are the Atlas Religion Database, so it's Atlas Serials Plus, um, Old Testament, New Testament Abstracts. If you're in psychology or counseling, um, within DTL, there's uh, psych articles and psych info. Um, but then if you're probably familiar from college, uh, things like JSTOR and ProQuest and Project Muse and things along those lines, uh, we also have access to those. So, um, and then I, from a biblical studies standpoint, uh, Thesaurus Lingua Greca and the Digital Lobe Classical Library are also just some two fun tools that get it that we, that we have access to as well. Um, now, one thing about it, this isn't necessarily an official um, aspect of the library um, here at the seminary. But if you're if you're planning on going into pastoral ministry or biblical studies of some sort, um, most likely you'll be interested in buying some sort of Bible software package um, to to use in your studies. Um, so you may have heard of something called Accordance, or you may have heard of Logos Bible software or things like that. Um, we the, the seminary itself has relationships with these different companies. And as a student, you, you do have the ability to um, purchase those items at a discount. Um, and so that's one great thing that when you're a student here, you can get some really excellent deals on Bible software that you won't have once you graduate. I mean, so it's a really a good opportunity to get, to get resources um, for, for pastoral ministry like that. The other thing is, is we do have um, uh, Accordance Bible software in our computer, on our computer lab computers. So we have computers at the library that you can use with access to databases. Um, and that stuff is available for you, you to use um, in-house. So that's another resource that, that we have available. Now, one of the questions that I get asked most often is what happens when I graduate? Um, and this is this is a, a real this is a, a definite problem uh, to, to put it bluntly. We when when you come to Gordon Conwell, part of your tuition pays for access to licensed databases, and the seminary pays those different companies to have access to those things. And we pay based on the number of students we have, and so we can only allow current students and current faculty and staff to access most of the resources that we have. 
Um, but that being said, we do have a large number of resources available to alumni. Um, and a couple, of, a couple of important ones, you can see that's mentioned, and actually I'll go ahead and go back to that library page and go home. Can you see the main library page again? Everything okay? Good. So you can see here, there's a link down here that says alumni resources, and this lists them out. There's this ATLA religion database, Atlas alum. Um, then there's ProQuest religion database. Right now, Media is actually an excellent little, uh, an excellent program that gives you access to to videos and um, that are good for Sunday school, for small group presentations, for even for for um, presentations in your church. Something that you have access to. But then also the open access digital theological library, um, which is like the digital theological library, but what they've been doing is they've been collecting resources that are free but high quality and bringing them together into the into um, one interface. So while you can't um, you can't get access to all of the digital content, um, you do have access to the digital to to a good portion of digital content that can be very helpful. And this this Atlas for alum is really one that's that's really um, a lot of our alumni use. Um, it's something that you can use to look up um, articles on particular passages of scripture, particular, particular theological resources, um, and things like that, and have full text access to the articles. It's a great resource. But then the other thing is, is as, um, as an alumni, um, you have access, let me stop sharing here. As an alum, you also have access to the physical libraries. Um, you can use the library as a guest. Um, you're allowed to come in, you're allowed to check out items, um, and you're allowed to use any of the resources that we have electronically um, from our, our computers on site. Um, you can bring your own computer on site and you can log into the network and you can use any of the resources that way um, as well. Um, and so we do, we do, uh, we, we serve a lot of our alumni in the area that are our local pastors now, <clears throat> but we also are, are, you know, we serve local pastors that aren't alumni as well. So um, it's, we don't cut off library access once you graduate, but they're just because of the legalities of cer certain things, we can't ac give access to everything. Um, so yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, I. Yeah, I'll open it up, and if, if you have any questions, I can ask them, I can answer them here. What do we need to become librarians? <laughs> the most important thing you need to be, need to have as a librarian is the desire to help people. That's the main thing. So if you like to help people and you want to learn how to do that, then you can become a librarian. So uh, unfortunately, they, the, a lot of times people want you to have a library degree as well. And so you end up having to pay money for a library degree. But really, the main criteria is you want to be able to help people. Notice that I didn't say it, it's you have to like books. <laughs> because being a librarian is a lot bigger than books. Hey, Jim, why don't you kind of speak to, um, in real life terms, um, if our students are uh, maybe doing some traveling and maybe they uh, are a student in Charlotte, but they're up in the Northeast, you know, visiting family, you know, what would they have access to as a, as a student? Sure. Yeah. So any of our, as a student at any of our campuses, you have access to our, to, to the different campus libraries. Um, so if you're a Charlotte student, you're more than welcome to use the library here in, in Hamilton. Um, and <clears throat> when it comes to uh, using our library, you're welcome to come in and use it. Any, well, the electronic resources are available from anywhere. Um, and, and so you can get to that. Different campuses do have different specializations and special collections. So for instance, at the Hamilton campus, we do have um, a special collection that, that focuses on the Advent Christian Conference, which is a particular denomination. So we have a lot of really rich materials there. But then also we have a rare book room. So if you're interested in seeing things like, you know, a Luther Bible from 1534 or things like that, you can talk to us and we can actually show that to you. Um, if you're interested in something like that, you need to make an appointment ahead of time. But we, you know, we do have that kind of material here. Um, but really, it's it's it, we we have 
it, you, you have access to anything that's that's available in the library. Um, you would have access to if you're if you're actually physically here. Even things that are that like a physical book that you don't we don't have electronically. If you're off campus and you need access to that, or if you're at another campus and only another light one of the other libraries has it, uh, we we are able to scan portions of books and send them your way, or order electronic versions of books and send them your way as well. So we all of our libraries work very closely together in sharing resources. It's not just you know we only serve I, I serve all of our campuses, not just Goddard Library. What has been, these are just coming from my mind, guys, so oh, you yeah. guys can jump in at any time. What has been the weirdest request that you had as a librarian? I'm sure you've got some, yeah, there it is. I'm sure you got <laughs> something out there. Oh, goodness, the weirdest request. I don't know. Um, I mean, you always have kind of funny requests as far as people that, but one thing that's for sure is that librarians, they don't, we're not here to do your work for you. We're here to make your work easier, but not to do your work for you. Um, so I've had, I've, I've had pastors actually contact me in the past and say, hey, could you read me a couple of articles about the Virgin Mary? Because I'm getting ready to preach a sermon on something and I just want to know about it. And I'm like, buddy, you need to get your own dictionary and you need to look these things up yourself it's something that you know i can't just take care of that for you so there's that type of stuff um the stuff that i've really enjoyed as far as i don't know about the weirdest um but stuff that's meant a lot to me is helping students that i know that uh we had a student here uh about a, a decade ago who was from sierra leone and one of his research projects was looking specifically at dealing with childhood trauma and he was looking specifically at applying that to counseling former child soldiers in in Africa. And so here is somebody that is is planning on going back into his own context and is using library resources to to have an impact directly in the lives of people who who have real need. And it's easy, it's easy as a librarian to think, okay, I'm just helping somebody out with their, their assignment. It's another thing to think, okay, me helping this person with an assignment is actually something that's going to have an impact for God's kingdom. And that, that just is, is the most rewarding part of my job. Awesome. As you can tell, we've got students that are pretty much represented all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so naturally they're going to be thinking, all right, so I hear about all of the access that you can have within the United States, but what about me? I'm mm -hmm. across the ocean. How can I get access uh, to what you have? Yeah, and that's that's an excellent question. Um, as far as the electronic resources, uh, it, it, it would depend on, of course, your country's policies as far as the network go, internet goes. Um, we, if, if there is a situation where um, somebody does not have access to electronic resources, we, we do what we can to, to help them out. Um, I'm actually in the process of, of getting some books shipped to a pastor in Nigeria right now um, who ordered them. He's, act, he's a doctor of ministry student and some, of, some other people have purchased books for him and we're sending it over there. So we try, to, we try to accommodate wherever we can, realizing that electronic resources are just not, it's not a cure-all for everything. Um, that being said, that's the primary means that our international students are going to be able to access resources is through the electronic databases. Um, if there are things that are not available electronically, what, we will do what we can to, to get that material available to them. Uh, we, we cannot ship books outside of the continental United States, um, so we can't mail things typically, um, but, but we can try to get electronic resources out and we we work on a case-by-case -case basis we do work with individuals students will ask us ask us for help in getting things and we we i email or whatever and we'll give it to them so any other that. burning questions that are out there yeah, yeah.
Thank you for this session. Um, actually, I do have a few books. I mean, I try to bring them back, but uh, the time that I put them back, for some reason, I couldn't add chop them up. So um, I am more than willing to bring them back. So um, any thought, any ideas? You, you have our books? I do have your books. Oh, man, we're <laughs> down. We've, we've got, you know, we've got the library police that we send out and they, they retrieve our books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we, we recognize that stuff happens, especially with, with COVID and things like that. People have had a hard time getting books to us. So if you have books out that, that are overdue or, or need to be returned and you're having a hard time, send, send us an email um, to the lot, send a library uh, email or contact us through the library website. Um, if you go to the, let's see, if you go to the library website and let's see, the main library website, and you'll see a link down here that says ask a librarian or you'll see here where it says questions um, that gives you a form you can use that form to to send us an, send us an email and we'll get back to you about it um, the big thing with 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 books is just you know don't suffer in silence and and let us know let us know if there's a problem and and we'll work with you we're not we're not out to to we're not out to give anybody fines or, or you know, smack anybody's knuckles for having having books out late. We're 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 here to work with you. I appreciate it. Um, sure. Currently, um, is uh, the library open to like for exchanging? Like, you know, let's say I want to return those books and get some new books. Can where, I do that? Where are you located, Mark Henry? Um, currently, I'm up in Worcester right now. Okay, so did you borrow from the, the Hamilton campus? Um, it was the Boston, the Boston campus. campus. The Boston that, campus right now, I believe, is closed. So you wouldn't be able to return it there. Um, but you, you, would, you would be welcome to come to the Hamilton campus and return books or, or take books out here. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, hello, James. Thanks for your session. And I have a question that uh, you just said oh, we are able, if you are going to come with students, we are able to um, access the printed books of other libraries such as Harvard uh, mm -hmm. Divinity Ad Libraries. Uh, but what about the digital resources? Could we access their digital resources? That's a fantastic question. Um, because of of the agreements that that different schools have with the different content providers um, so the publishers and and other companies that make digital resources available typically they can only make materials available to their own students remotely so if you if you were to come to gordon conwell you would have access to the print resources at harvard <clears throat> but you would not have access to the electronic resources at Harvard. Now, that being said, um, we can get pretty much anything electronically that you would need uh, through interlibrary loan or through purchasing electronic resources ourselves. So it may take a little bit longer. It may be a bit of a delay, um, but you would, you would have access to that material um, if you request it through interlibrary loan. The other thing is, is if you go physically to Harvard and you bring your laptop or you use one of their computer workstations at their library, you most likely would be able to use their resources, but you would have to talk to their librarians about using their electronic resources on campus. Okay, thank you. Sure. And what, and what's more, and um, you just also said, um, uh, the seminary libraries are less competing compared with university libraries. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's the reason? What what are the reasons? Was it because uh, is it because uh, the seminary libraries are relatively uh, smaller, or because the universities also have other schools as law school libraries? Yeah, and I, it's both, really. Um, so like a university library, a lot of times will have access to, um, they, they have um, 
So for instance, if you're a part of a university, you may actually have a computer science degree program in, in your, in your, in your university that have the, have the ability to bring some of those resources to the library that wouldn't be available necessarily in a seminary library. That being said, that's why that digital theological library is so important to us. It, it's actually really opened things up so that we really are on the same level as a university library as far as the resources we can provide um, digitally. Because, because we're all sharing, it's kind of like a university where all of the different disciplines are able to share in managing their library and all the different libraries within a university are able to work together. Uh, we are working together with other seminaries to do the same thing. Okay, thank you. Sure. We're getting close to our time here, so I still want to keep the floor open for any questions uh, for the next couple of minutes. Um, we want, want to make sure that we can uh, hear from anybody who has any questions. Um, it seems I have still have a, another <laughs> chance. It's okay. Um, uh, I'm, I, uh, to be frankly, uh, frankly speaking, I am still confused about the difference between uh, university divinity schools and seminaries. Mm -hmm. What, what, what are the differences? Um, I from a from a a divinity school and a seminary. Um, there are a couple of there are a couple of differences that can pop up in general, just as far as the school goes. Um, a seminary is typically focused on producing pastoral ministry, people for pastoral ministry. Um, a divinity school um, may be geared towards pastoral ministry, but they're also going to be dealing a lot of times with religion and religion in general, um, and more of a, the, the academic pursuit of theology. Now, that being said, you do have, like within Gordon-Conwell, we have students that are here ha that have no intention of going into pastoral ministry, that go into advanced theological studies, advanced biblical studies, and, and counseling ministries and things like that that aren't necessarily the typical divinity or seminary kind of thing. Um, the other thing is usually the difference between a divinity school and a seminary a lot of times is just the name. Uh, really, a lot of times in a seminary and a divinity school, they are the same thing. The only difference is that a divinity school is a school within a larger university. A seminary is independent from a larger university. So it, it just, it kind of, it's a case by case kind of thing. Um, the, the other thing that might, might end up having, happening is just association with a particular denomination, but that's not even a, necessarily a, a, a divinity school versus seminary thing. Because, you know, for instance, um, Boston University is associated with United Methodists, um, but they have, it's not just United Methodists there in their divinity school. Um, Gordon-Conwell, we have, we actually have a more broad, broad basis, but then you also have seminaries that are just for Southern Baptist or just for Methodist or things like that. So it's a, it's one of those things, it's, it's, it's kind of a fuzzy category between divinity school and seminary. Thank you. Sure. Um, if I really care about academic, um, uh, would you give me some suggestions about? Um, I, I would say the most important thing is that you find a program that is, is, you know, find a program that where you have people, professors, scholars, um, and other resources that are going to help you in the direction you want to go. So for Gordon Conwell, um, there are very strong professors in different areas of studies. And if that's where you want to go academically, then definitely seek those professors out, get to know those professors, get to know um, not just the content of information, but also the people that, that, are, that are working in those particular areas because that's going to be your way to get into, into further academic studies. Um, and, and also a lot of times those, <clears throat> the, the consortial agreements, so the agreements between um, other schools 
and and Gordon Conwell are a very helpful thing. Um, where I know many, because I was in biblical studies, I have many class for classmates who went on to Harvard, Penn State, places like that, because they were able to take um, advanced level courses at Harvard Divinity School while they were a student at Gordon-Conwell. And because of that, it was good for them to, to network and to work into other, other um, advanced research institutes. So it's one. It's actually a really great advantage at Gordon Conwell, or the relationships we have with other schools, um, because you you can get exposure beyond just Gordon Conwell while you're in Gordon Conwell. Um, but that's particularly you have to research on your own campus and see where how that would work out. Okay, thanks for answering. Sure. All right, we're getting dangerously close to uh, <laughs> wrapping up. So, last question. Last question uh, for anybody. I will say this: brief, a brief commercial break here. Um, how we're going to end up doing the giveaway? This is what I want you guys. If you have pen or paper, however you got to write this down, you guys are going to have to email me directly. I want you to write down my email. It's J. C R U M J Crumb at Gordon Conwell. That's going to be one one word. You don't have to hyphenate it. Dot edu. Okay, J Crumb at Gordon Conwell. Dot edu. Okay. We'll take our last questions and then we'll wrap up and then I'm going to tell you how you can get your name in the drawing for this incredible book written by our Bye. president, Doctor Sunquist. All right. Last question. Will forever hold your peace. So my question. So my question uh, is, why this session is called, um, if I'm not mistaken, with our books? Is that what it, is that what it was? More than books. Oh, more than books. Okay. More yes. Why? <laughs> why that name? Why that name? Because we because it's the library is more than just print books, more than just print books, but also electronic resources, and then also the librarians that are here to assist you um, as as a student. So the, the library is, is more than just the books that we have here on the shelves. And I think there was one more question. Thank you. I'm still an undergrad. You gotta be um, getting ready for the masters. For the masters. Their program for undergrad. Uh, I wasn't able to catch exactly what you were saying there. So I'm still an undergrad. Okay. So does Gordon Carroll have any programs for undergrad? Yeah, you would need to talk to Jonathan um, about that and the different programs they have for the, or, or uh, other entryways that in common. And I'd be I'd be more than help more than happy to help you. You can just email me directly from the, the uh, from the email that I put out there, and I'll get back to you. All right, uh, thank you, Jim. That was incredible. I knew you were going to be incredible um, because you are a local celebrity. So I was glad you could help us out. All right. Glad to help. God bless so, you all. So here's this is what I'm going to do. This is what I, if you want to get in the drawing, okay, what I need you to do is I need you to email me directly the name of Dr. Sunquist's latest book. And the person that gets it to my inbox first is going to be able to win this signed book. I'm gonna give you a hint. It's in the email that you received for this webinar. All right, rules clear? Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I can't wait to be able to uh, correspond and talk with some of you guys. Uh, in the near future. If you have any questions about anything we dis that we discussed, if it's a library, I can get you connected to Jim. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, Gordon Conwell or potentially enrolling in the future, I'll definitely be able to help you with that as well. All righty.
Well, thank you guys so very much. And we'll see you guys next time.